Hi, the goal of this video is to reconcile a common misalignment between intuition and physical laws. Here's how you might test yourself to see if you suffer from this misalignment. Consider this question. How do you answer? Force is necessary for motion. Or, I guess as a question, is force necessary for motion? If you answered yes, you might be suffering from this misalignment. The correct response would have been, force is necessary for acceleration, but an object in motion will remain in motion without an external force. This response is consistent with Newton's second law. Newton's second law says that acceleration is equal to net force divided by mass. Or the first version you see is that the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. So what this means is for an object that is already in motion, if the applied net force is zero, then the acceleration will be zero. And since acceleration is rate of change of velocity, the velocity of the object already in motion won't change. So it'll remain in motion. If this description of Newton's second law sounded strange to you, if it didn't sound like the correct description of the natural world you know, the goal of this lecture video is to illustrate why it might seem that way and help reconcile your intuition to our description of the physical world. The key insight comes down to this. You have to remember the friction force, which is part of the net force. Let me illustrate this with a FET PHET simulation from University of Colorado. I am going to use the force and motion simulation to describe a common everyday scenario and attempt to explain it in terms of Newton's second law or more precisely explain Newton's second law using this scenario. So here is a common scenario. You want to move a large piece of furniture or a package, so you push on it. As you begin to push, it won't budge until you push it hard enough. Get to moving as you continue to push it hard, but if you stop pushing it at some point, it won't continue to move, but it'll come to a stop. This is our common experience. And this experience is what, so far, informed our intuition. And this is completely counter to what Newton's second law says, that net force is equal to mass times acceleration. At least it is counter if you only think of your applied force. As you apply a force, acceleration is obviously not increasing with the force. With zero force, you get zero acceleration. With some force, you still get zero acceleration. And even if you get it to move, when you stop pushing at some point with a zero applied force, acceleration is obviously not zero. There is a negative acceleration which brings the crate to a stop. I am giving you this description, not to say that this is the correct description, but to say that it's not an unreasonable way to think. Many smart people, including very smart Greek philosophers, thought this way. It is really through the pioneering work of Galileo and Newton, we are able to give the new description, which is the basis of modern engineering. So, let me turn on the label for the forces. This is going to make the explanation a little easier. Now, 
when I'm not pushing on the box, there are no horizontal forces on the box, so the net force on it is zero, and it remains at rest. Zero acceleration. When I start to push, you see that the applied force is only one part of the force. There is friction force, static friction force, that exactly balances out the applied force. As I increase the applied force, friction force increases with it to keep our net force equal to zero. So in this picture, there's actually no conflict with Newton's second law. The key is to realize that applied force is not the only force, but there may be an additional force, friction force. This friction force doesn't increase with our limit. So at some point, the magnitude of applied force is greater than the friction force, and the box does begin to accelerate. When I stop pushing, the friction force, kinetic friction force, remains, opposing the sliding motion of the box against the ground. This friction force is responsible for the negative acceleration, which eventually brings the crate to a stop. And once it stops, the friction force disappears also. Newton's second law is completely valid in everyday interaction. The cautionary note is, in order to use this law, you may need to work out the magnitude of friction force. Now, it is easier to see the validity of Newton's law in a world with no friction. Imagine pushing something on a surface completely iced over, no friction. When you push the crate, even if you apply a very small amount of force, the crate begins to accelerate. With this small force, it takes very long for the crate to accelerate appreciably, but it does. Now, once the crate gets moving, you don't have to continue to push it. In fact, in the absence of applied external force, the crate doesn't come to a stop. In order to stop the crate from moving, you actually have to apply a force to bring it to a stop. You can actually do a simple experiment to verify this in your own experience. Next time you are grocery shopping and you are pushing a good cart, no broken wheels, that are loaded fairly heavily, try this and see if it's true um, after making sure there's no one around you and that you have plenty of space. One, it is difficult to get the cart started from rest. It'll take a fair amount of effort to get it to move. But two, once the cart is moving, it is much easier to keep it moving. Three, if you need to stop the cart quickly, simply not pushing the cart is not enough. You have to pull the cart backward to bring it to a quick stop. The first, that it's uh, difficult to get a stationary cart started, is because of Newton's second law. So when you are bringing the cart from rest, you need to accelerate it to get it to move. And with a larger mass, you need large force to get it to accelerate the same amount as a smaller mass. Two is also because of Newton's second law. To keep a moving cart at the same velocity, you only need acceleration of zero, meaning net force of zero. You just need to push enough to counter the friction force on the wheels because you're not trying to accelerate the cart. And three is demonstrating that you don't need a force to keep an object in motion, in motion. In fact, you need a force to bring it to a stop. In fact, this crate here has been moving very slowly the whole time with zero friction. So to bring it to a complete stop, nothing does it better than friction. I encourage you to spend enough time here until this makes sense. You can find this simulation on the FED website, 
Feta Colorado Dadid you to play around with it. A good physical intuition is a powerful thing that lets you get correct answers without a lot of work. Not having a good physical intuition forms real barriers to learning in physics, where the emphasis is not merely learning new facts, but entirely new ways of thinking. And it's difficult to think in a new way when the old way of thinking keeps getting in the way. So please email me if there are any questions. And bye.